So in this video, we're going to bring the particle together to make one effect. This video will be mostly using Unity to make this. So here in Unity, I have my three effects that I want to combine. So I have the particle shooting, I have the breaking floor here with animation, and also have here like a glowing crack. So I showed before how to make all of this in previous video. So I, go, I went over the particle creation, the simulation, and also how to make this crack. So I have not shown the material yet for this one, but I showed you how to use the mask if you are interested in looking at the material. So here I'm going to start with my mask. I actually decided to invert this, so we just minus one, so it's inverted. And then I'm going to subtract a certain value, which I'm able to control here with this parameter. So I can control uh, where this gradient will solve frag cut off. So it will, if I increase this, it will like move up or down. Then I'm also going to clamp the values. So since we are having the potential that we are subtracting bigger values that are out of the 0 to 1 range, I'm clamping that back to 0 to 1. And then I'm using a ceiling, which is, which is its forcing of the values to either be 0 or 1. And ceiling means that it's going to round up to the, high, to the highest uh, value. Then next up, I'm going to use here this lerp. And I'm going to cut out the shape of my crack. So I use the mask here in the slurp to then have here that shape. I also do another lerp, or I can just do a multiply. And this is then just setting a overall opacity. And then this output will then be continued into the alpha, of course, because this is mainly for controlling the alpha. Now, furthermore, here we then have the colors. So I'm going to use here another mask that I made, which is like this crack with like a gradient in it. So it, this was a bevel in Substance Designer. I used the power here with a, move, with a parameter again, so I can uh, lower this or make this more intense. I'm also again clamping this back to a 0 to 1 range. And then I use this in the lerp to set colors. So we can have this orange glow or set other colors here as well. So in this case, I decided to just go with like this uh, dark and orange. And this is then my albedo color. So of course, make sure you are enabling some sort of like form of transparency. So we can actually uh, use our alpha here. The material is not that complex. And it, so I'm just able to, for example, here set this color. And I can blend here this out. As you can see, I can easily uh, blend out this here from a zero to one range and i can also hear like as you, and i can also hear as you can see like boost this crack effect with this value now let's start with bringing this together and i'm going to use here the timeline so i will be able to put everything together in the timeline and before i do that let's sort of like combine this into one nice uh, network here so on the projectile i'm going to right click and i'm just going to create an empty one and I'm going to drag this out. So now it has the position here of that space. Double check if scale is 1. So that's right. And give this a proper name like FX Magic Projectile. And once we have this, we can bring in here all our effects. So you can make a prefab from this if you want to. But I'm going to just keep it like that in here. So we can bring this a bit closer to where I'm going to actually shoot it. And in my case, I'm actually not able, and in my case, I'm not like shooting at a different height. So I'm always shooting from a consistent height. So you can bring in here this particle around this position. And I'm going to lower here also this effect. So I'm going to make sure it's like a bit blend with the ground, like so. Maybe push it a bit forward. Make sure it's like along the line here of our particle. So in my case, it's like long enough to reach the explosion here we can always go back to the particle and tweak the lifetime to make this longer or shorter then here i'm going to grab this glowing cracks this is also just the default plane of unity by the way so nothing uh, special here and let's just uh, keep it a bit higher up so we can still visually see this before i blend this better now that is set up, 
And first thing that we can do here is we can click here on the parent. We can go to our timeline. If you don't have timeline open, you can always go to window sequence timeline. So that's how you can find the timeline. So of course there are different, definitely other ways of how you can do this, but I think timeline was the easiest one to get this working. So now let's create. And it's basically asking us where we want to save this. So we can give this like a special name or you can leave it like this. So FX Magic Projectile Timeline, which I think is okay. And I'm going to save this under my tutorial assets here. So save. And then here we have our timeline with already like an animation track. So actually I don't need this one. So I'm just going to remove this one. So delete. And now let's start with the particle. So we can here grab our particle and we can just drag and drop this into the timeline. And we're going to say visual effects activation. So by default here, the timeline will be empty then. And we're going to right click again and we can say visual effects animation clip. And this will like, and this will create this long bar here to trigger the particle. Now, our particle itself is constantly triggering, but I mentioned before that I only want to trigger it at once because of course my effect will only spawn when I want it to spawn. So let's go back to our particle and instead of having the, like a periodic burst, which is constantly bursting every two seconds, I wanted to have like a single burst here and I will spawn three of them. So I will spawn three meshes that are like rotating uh, in each other. So now back to the timeline, when we press play, we can see here that particle flying. Sometimes it's not always working, I don't know why, but in this case it's working fine. So it's now spawning once, and if you want more of them, we can just like copy paste this. And then we have like one, and then two, and then three if you want more. So we can control when this particle is being activated. So it's a great way of uh, sort of like timing this a bit better. So let's place this at 0, 0.0 for now. And now next up, let's bring in that uh, breaking floor. So again, drag this in the timeline and we're gonna say animation track because this is an animation. And in here, we want to bring in our animation that is built in the FBX. So if I go to projects, my model, and if I open this at the bottom here, we have a animation called main. So this is the symbol of an animation and it's called main. So the naming itself main might not be ideal. So we could have, so we could have created a better name in Houdini. Uh, but for now, let's go with that. So we're going to right click and let's say create animation clip. And here I have multiple mains. So I'm going to make sure I pick the right one from my tutorial asset. So it's this one in my case. And now I can bring this in here and let's press play. I can already see that my animation is too long and we need to speed this up. So we can always go here in the speed multiplier and say, for example, three times as fast. So we can bring that in here and it's three times faster. And you can see that my particle is not always triggering now at the right moment. And maybe like, let's delay this a bit. So here at a certain point is my, it's my ground cracking and I'm going to place this at the moment here in the middle of my scene and just press play. And now I can actually now trigger my effect by just pressing play on the timeline here. I think it's okay. Maybe the time needs, the timeline here needs to be a little bit faster if you want to like realign this up. But overall, I think uh, it's good enough here. Let's look at it from a different angle. Maybe let's look at it like from this angle. And I think that's okay. It doesn't look that bad. So don't forget to press unplay again here. And now the other thing here is then the cracks of the floor. So we can grab that. And again, this is an animation track. And I want this to be, uh, and I want this to actually control the material. The way we do that is we can actually simply press the record button here. So this red button 
So this is a record one. So we are recording. So let's go to frame zero and let's go to glow. And in my material, I have here my alpha amount. So this is at start one because I don't see anything. And when we are here coming to the end of the particle, we are bringing this then to zero. Now we have that sort of aligning with it. We can always like uh, open here the curve editor and move this bit. So if it's not good enough, we can see that we can tweak this bit with the curves. Let's press play again. And that aligns up better. We can always hide the curves back again. And now the last thing to do here is to fade this out. And I'm gonna go to my overall opacity. Okay, I'm just gonna move this to one. And when we are ending here our animation, we are setting this to zero. So we will have this fade out. So important now is to is to press the record button again because it's gonna stop recording now. And now let's press play again. And we have this effect. So we have the groundbreaking and fading out. We can also go back here in play mode to see it fully aligning. And I'm quite happy with this result. So of course we can keep tweaking, keep adding and manipulating some information, but this is like a really great start and great way of combining these particles. So now that's it for the setup. So we combined all the particles. And the last thing that I want to show you is how I trigger it based on uh, this spammer here. So this little sphere. So we can actually put this on the side since it's not needed anymore. And let's here take a look at our spammer. So our spammer has one script, which is just spamming the particles. And it has a sphere in it, a cube, and also a firing point. So that's the main setup here. Now let's take a look at the code. So here at the top, I'm creating some public values and some private values. So like uh, our fire point, so I know where my fire point is. And to shoot the park from, I know the camera be because I will need this to calculate like the, the mouse and position where to shoot this. I also have like a maximum length, fire rate, a reference to my effects, my particles that I want to shoot. And also have an auto destroying time on this particle. Then I have some more uh, private values here. And when we start, I'm already saving out the FX particle into our uh, private FX to spawn. Then further under update, what I'm first going to do is calculate the mouse position and the rotation for that. So I'm going to use here getting the mouse position, of course. Then we need to have the screen point to ray. Then we're going to do a ray cost and see how far this is going. So I have like a maximum length that I can control. And then I'm going to trigger this function called rotate to mouse, which is here at the bottom of my script. So here I'm going to get the direction from our destination versus our uh, own object. And I'm also not checking here in the Y axis. So we're just looking at X and Z. And I'm going to save here then our rotation in this variable. So this is also a private variable that I can always call if I want the direction of the mouse. Then let's go back here. And next up here is then spawning the particle. So I'm doing an if statement and just checking if I'm pressing the mouse button. And also here I'm checking at a certain fire time. So this is sort of like my fire rate. So when every time we press, we're going to set a uh, time to fire or the fire rate a certain value so we can control how often this bombs so if i hold my mouse we are like spamming this particle only once a second instead of like every tick that we have here then i'm going to call a spam effects which is here this function so i'm going to create game objects effects and going to instantiate our uh, effects to spam which was that reference here to my my effects and i'm gonna go to the fire point so i know where the particle to start from so this means basically here at this fire point so we are spawning this here at the fire point 
at the fire point. Then also next up, we need to actually set the local rotation. So when we spawn the particle, it's also rotated in the right direction. And we're going to use the rotation, which was set here in the rotate to mouse function. So we're going to say here that the local rotation is that rotation that we set. Then also here to end with, I'm going to do this auto destroy. So we're going to have uh, the link to the VFX and I'm just going to say, look at how many seconds I have here. So currently I set it to two. That's a quick overview of how this code was created. So this code is just mainly made here for this, this setup to just spawn the particle and see it working in action. So the only thing to do here, if I want to get this working, is to drag here my magic projectile into my VFX slot. And now I press play. And whenever I click now, I will spawn this effect. As you can see, it's working. So the only thing that is not working is actually the, the line coming from the particle. So I think that the crack here is too low. So maybe we need to just lift this up and see if that would fix this issue. And as you can see, it's now perfectly working. So we are spawning this at a specific height. So I need to always make sure that's good enough here in my scene. So also notice that if I shoot a multiple of them, we have here these clones and it will automatically be destroyed. So we're not like stacking that up in the background. And that was it for these videos. So I hope you enjoyed these videos. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.